Hi, I'm Keith Deasy, and despite what some of you were hoping, I'm still here. So we're going to be making a chair that looks like something Spider-Man would throw at Electro to win a fight. Why? I don't really know, I just had the idea and really wanted to go with it, and then Total Boat sent me some epoxy, and I was like, yeah, this is the day. It took a year. So you notice that I have this acrylic I'm making into a mold. I used the oven to heat it up so I could bend it better. I don't remember the temperature I put it in at, but it was probably pretty low. And right now I'm using tuck tape to seal it all up where the Loctite uh, silicone sealant might not have done the best job. And as you can see, putting a hacksaw upside down in the clamp in order to cut the tape instead of using scissors is the move and you can steal. Who is texting me right now? So I haven't done a lot of epoxy work to date. I mean, I did the sword before this, I think. I did the guitar after this. Like I said, this took like a year. So I'm not the best mold maker, but I did get good with DIY pigments. Crushed up uh, sidewalk chalk, by the way. Totally cool, semi-translucent with flakes in it. And this next one is just blue acrylic paint. And it gets a really nice opaque rich color. Yeah, so the one on your right, my left, is tinted with the chalk, and the one on my right, your left, is tinted with blue acrylic paint. You can see the difference, and it gets this really cool swirl pattern, which I enhance, a trick I learned from watching people uh, marble paper, which is totally a YouTube rabbit hole you should go down, with that stylus just kind of swirling it all around. Add another bit with a different bit of more... I lost my train of thought entirely. Different blue, different translucency, more of the same effect, and you can see it here. I made it through that, that part of the voiceover. I deserve a reward. So I got the super cool effect I was looking for with the shiny top, it looks beautiful, it's all hardened up, and let's cut to some woodworking. So the sequence of uh, tool usings was filmed in my old basement workshop, which I do kind of miss sometimes. I've got a much bigger shop now, and there's a lot more space, but there's a charm to this old shop that I miss. And, you know, uh, the new shop doesn't have it. There's the low ceilings, it's the dingy atmosphere, and the horrible air quality, and you know what? I don't miss this shop because I couldn't run a light bulb and a table saw at the same time without blowing a, blowing a fuse. So you know what? Forget it. By the way, I'm cutting like uh, five degree angles into the sides of those boards. So for this trick, I had already drilled a small hole in the center underside of the seat, which what, what will be the seat. Uh, and I put a screw on the center of this piece of plywood going up. So when you see me spin the piece of epoxy, it's screwing it down onto that so then I can work with this jig. So this is my take on your typical circle cutting jig for the table saw. It's a bit bigger and a bit more dangerous and I choose to work the way I work and I'm not telling you that this is how you have to do this if you've got a better idea or something you feel more comfortable with. Do that and don't blame me when you hurt yourself. Do a little sanding with, oh hi Gus, that's my, my kitty, so it's hi. Um, doing a little sanding, doing a little polishing, that's mineral spirits and sandpaper on the first bit. I went up to like uh, 800, and then I used headlight uh, polishing kit for the second part, and it worked pretty okay. I cut that piece of plywood I used for the jig earlier into the base for the seat because I didn't want the epoxy to be see-through to the legs I wanted uh, something to hide the bottom. And now I'm nailing the boards around. I'll affix them a little better later, but this is me getting them to stick to themselves in the overall shape I want. And then I will build an understructure, which you'll see part of, because I'm not the best filmmaker. Anyway, sand it all flush. And the original concept for this chair was to have an undermount tank that was actually a drink holder with the dispenser. But sometimes waiting a year for an idea that's never going to happen is not a good look and you should just finish the project. Like I said earlier, here's part of the understructure. This is me just nailing it into place. I ended up supporting this with screws and brackets just to be sure that when you lean back in the chair, it didn't make a fool out of you and explode. 
And this cedar that I use looks too new. I need it to look aged. So what I'm brushing on here is a magic potion that you get by combining steel wool and vinegar in a jar and forgetting about it for about eight months. And you brush it on and something something tannins, something something oxidation, and it looks like old wood and you'll see it later. Oh, this is fun. I started doing the work at my old shop, like I said. So in about two seconds here, we're gonna get a smash cut one year later to be finishing this project in a new shop. There it is. Using sparks as a transition. It's like, uh, ooh, shiny, look over here. Don't mind the fact that the entire scenery changed and now there's a global pandemic. And what we're looking at now is loosely defined as welding. Prior to this, I had approximately two hours worth of welding experience. So I would appreciate in the comments if you other lesser welders would not assail my unimpeachable technique. This is how the pros do it. I'm just saying, two hours. And yeah, I totally beefed it on these cross struts. The section where they cross is not centered. So I was so distracted by the pretty, pretty sparkles that is welding. I completely screwed up the alignment on these struts. I just did it all the way around. I didn't even want to put the video out because I was so annoyed by it. It bothers me every time I look at it. Please and thank you. I included this shot because it made me look cool. Uh, I also screenshotted it and made it my Facebook profile picture. That's who I am. So I gotta tell you, I just love shots like this where I take a measuring tape and stretch it out at the project. Like, it just makes it look so official, like I actually measure things from time to time. Also, for those worrying about me uh, getting too far off track, I just used a contour scribe tool to take the flat workbench top and transcribe it to the legs so that I could have a line to cut on very carefully to make the legs baboom. Like 75% flatter. This is me realizing my tabletop's not as flat as I thought it was. Moving on. This oil came with this oil can. I have no idea what it is. Welcome to another exciting edition of using woodworking tools to cut steel. Today, I'll be using a wood countersink bit to countersink holes into this mild steel. Look at that smoke. That's not supposed to happen. And now that the base is all constructed, I spray it with another magic potion. This time it's vinegar and salt in like a three to one ratio, give or take. You do this, you leave it outside for a day and it gets all really nice and patine. So as beautiful as it was, the super flat top to this seat wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, just like light wise and everything. So I just took a grinder to it to make ripples and you can see I'm being very careful and very geometric at first and at the end of it I had a technique worked out that ended up looking great. Uh, and I was wearing a respirator and I had an air filter going and I had a fan blown out the window because this, this right here, will kill you. And it turned out great shape-wise. You're going to see how it looks a little better later, but this is right afterwards wiped down with a little bit of water. It looks very natural and it catches the light so well. Now when it dries up, it's a little cloudy again, but it's really easy to fix because when you have cloudy epoxy or something like that, giving it a clear coat will actually make it transparent. It kind of fills in all those little holes, binds everything together, and restores the translucency of the epoxy. And what I'm using here is your standard acrylic clear coat gloss. You can find it at any hardware store. There's really nothing fancy going on here. And this is what the base looks like. So I gotta scrub off this bright orange surface rust and give it a clear coat. I'm also wiping it down with acetone just to make sure that I get any little dust or debris off before I go into the booth. Now this shot right here I had to do twice, going in, move the camera inside, and then come in again. It's to fake a two camera appearance. I like to call it the friend's entrance. And don't get mad at me for having a spray booth. I lucked out, I apologize, but no one told you that you need a booth to spray. And, okay, this steel rod bent around the outside lends a little bit of strength, but mostly aesthetics. If you look at pictures of how these water towers are constructed, it's a small detail that a lot of people don't realize is there, but the details matter. 
So I took various acrylic paints, black and brown and green and gray, and I watered them down and used them to weather the outside and the inside. The inside has an ombre effect because I wanted it to look like it had held various levels of water over the decades. Kind of went around the knot holes, went around where rust would be, dirtied it up real good, and it came out great. I even added pigeon poop, as you can see here, because it's got that city vibe. You can't have the aesthetics of New York City without pigeon poop. That's something Roman Mars won't tell you. Uh, so this is a satin clear coat. Again, nothing fancy. Just really pops all the color, makes it all so rich, and brings it all together. Looks great. It's time to attach the seat to the base, which is just attached with uh, screws through those countersunk holes I did earlier. And everything here kerthunks into where it ought to kerthunk. Boom, there goes the seat. And I'm really happy with this one. It's a weird project, that's for sure. And there will be a build guide eventually. Uh, if you see this before the build guide is out, it'll be down in the description at some point. Or, you know, just follow me on Instagram where I don't talk as much or Twitter where I don't talk at all. Or you can listen to my podcast where I talk a lot. Uh, if that's what you're into, it's called From the Ground Up. It's ftgupodcast.com and it is the history of how we do stuff. Uh, the history of how we make stuff? The history of how we make stuff. The story of how we make stuff. That's what it is. Anyway, this is Keith Decent saying, later makers.